Hello class, welcome to lesson 6.1, uh, Polygon Angle Sum Theorems. So the question today is, how does the number of sides and uh, polygons uh, relate to the sums of the measures of the exterior and interior angles? Uh, find sums of the uh, measures of the exterior and interior angles uh, of any given polygon is our goal. So let's uh, reca recap uh, that for a triangle, remember that the, if you were to add up the angles, the interior angles in a triangle, they would always add up to 180 degrees. And this is the sum of the interior angles for a, any triangle, whether it's an obtuse, acute, or right triangle. And you can see that by this acute triangle here, if you were to add these, they would add up to 180. So uh, we can use this to uh, find the interior angles of other polygons, such as this quadrilateral. This is a four-sided polygon. And notice that we can take this quadrilateral and break it into two triangles. When we make the triangles, we uh, start from a given vertex or you know corner, and we uh, draw a diagonal originating only from that one vertex. In this case, we can form two triangles from this. And since we know that uh, we can make two triangles, this, this can help us find the interior angles in the quadrilateral. Let's look at another example. Uh, let's look at a uh, pentagon, five-sided shape. Uh, polygon here. Now I, if I start from one corner, say this corner, I can, or that vertex, I can uh, draw diagonals originating only from that vertex and I can form three triangles. Let's do one more. We have here a seven-sided shape or a heptagon. Let's pick one corner with one vertex and draw uh, diagonals to the opposite corners, and in total we have five triangles. So hopefully you'll see a pattern by now. For a quadrilateral with four sides, we have two triangles, a pentagon with five sides, we have three triangles, and a heptagon with seven sides gives us five triangles. So hopefully you see that the pattern is you take the number of sides and you subtract two, and that gives you the number of triangles. And this is gonna be our formula, n minus two, where n is the number of sides. So if I were to want to find the interior angles for a quadrilateral, for instance, well, I know for that one triangle, it'll add up to 180. And so for another triangle, it'll also add up to 180. So it stands, stands to reason that we can take these two triangles, the interior angle sums for these triangles, add them all up, and that will give us a total for the quadrilateral. And so the total for this quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Similarly, we can do this for the pentagon, and add the interior angles for the triangles there, and so on. So for this formula, we take the number of triangles and we multiply by 180, 180 degrees for a triangle. And that gives us the sum of the interior angles. So this is known as the polygon interior angle sum theorem. So the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a, uh, in this case, a convex n-gon, so any polygon with any number of sides, is given by the formula. So you take the angles, you add them up, and then uh, that should equal uh, 180 times the number of triangles that can be formed from one vertex. All right, so let's um, provide a chart for the various polygons. So we have a quadrilateral, quad meaning four, Penta meaning 5, hexa 6, hepta 7, octa 8, nana 9, and deca is 10. So uh, those are the polygon names from 4 to 10. And the if you were to add up the angles on the inside, well, we know that there's two triangles here. There's uh, three triangles for a pentagon, four for a hexagon. So each, um, the, as the number of sides increase, you get an extra triangle from this. And you can multiply that by 180 to get your... Uh, and interior angle sum. Okay, so let's talk about the 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 polygons or the shapes that we looked at earlier. So these two, the quadrilateral and the heptagon, these are notice that they're not symmetric or anything like that. Um, and notice that each of the sides actually uh, stick out like this. They point outward, and this is known as convex. X meaning out. Same thing for the heptagon, the, the, the edges or the vertices, uh, they stick out, okay? So they stick outward. And this is, uh, let's assume that if we're looking at, for example, um, this side, and instead of pointing out, let's let it go into the shape. 
if that were the case, we'll have something that maybe looks like this, right? Where that side caves in. Let's do the same thing for, you know, let's say one of these corners, let's say that corner, and bring that in to the shape. Notice it's still a heptagon on the bottom and it's still a, a quadrilateral on the top. However, one of the sides is caved in and this is known as concave. So pretty much I've said it in the word, one of the sides caves in and then X meaning out, all the sides go out. So convex versus concave. And also we said that these were not symmetric and uh, all the sides are not necessarily congruent. And this is known as irregular. So the sides are not um, of the same measure and the angles are not the same measure. So that's called irregular. Compare this to, for example, a square, which is a quadrilateral, four-sided polygon, uh, and all the angles are the same. In fact, all the angles are 90 degrees, and each of the sides are uh, have the same length. The sides are congruent. So that would be a regular quadrilateral. Compare the heptagon, the irregular one on the left, to, or the bottom left, to the one on the bo bottom right. This one is a heptagon, but it is uh, regular. All the sides are congruent and the angles themselves are congruent. So these are regular polygons, equilateral and equiangular. Now polygon interior angles. So um, this, the angle sum the theorem that we used earlier, the polygon interior angle sum theorem, applies to both convex and concave polygons. Um, however, in the theorem it says convex, but you can use it for some concave polygons as well. Now, the regular polygons have the same interior angle measures. As we said earlier, regular has the same, has congruent sides and congruent interior angles as well. Um, so we can uh, find out what the angles are for a regular polygon. Take a pentagon, for instance. The sum of the interior angles from the chart earlier is 540. You can form three triangles from this. Now, if I wanted to get each of the angles in the inside, I'd simply take the total divided by the number of sides, in this case five for a pentagon, and I get 108 degrees on each side. So um, if we use the chart that we had uh, provided earlier, uh, in this case, we're looking at the regular version. So if we're looking at a regular hexagon, for instance, we take the total of the 720 and we divide it by the number of sides, six, and that will give us 720. And that will give us each of the angles in a regular hexagon, something that is symmetric, that it's a hexagon. All right, so uh, let's look at the first example. Find the missing interior angle in the given polygon. Okay, so notice that, and I wanna be careful to clarify this, uh, even though this polygon is symmetric, that's not the only definition, that's not necessarily the definition of a regular polygon. Um, so remember the definition of a regular polygon is all the angles, all the interior angles have to be the same and all the sides have to be congruent. So it just happens to be symmetric. Sometimes you'll see me sloppily use that word, um, but that is not the definition of regular. You want all the sides to be congruent, all the angles to be congruent. So in this case, even though this is symmetric, it's not regular. So this is an irregular um, pentagon here. And it says finding missing interior angle. So we're looking for this guy. I'll call it X uh, so we can solve for it. Now, since it is a pentagon, in this case, a convex one, but we can add the interior angles and we know that we can form three triangles off of this. If we use the formula N minus two for the number of triangles times 180, well, then that gives us that we have five sided polygon and so three times 180 is 540. So the angles in this pentagon add up to 540. And so we can add up all these angles. So this is gonna be 90 degrees. That's a 90 degree angle, that's a right angle. And we can add these in total. So X plus 90 plus the 135s on the bottom plus the 90 on the left is equal to 540 in total. And that'll help us find the missing angle. So we got 135, 135, that's 270. Uh, 90 plus 90 is 180, so 270 plus 180 in this case. So we got X plus, we got four, it looks like to be 450. It's equal to 540. And so if we subtract 450 on both sides, we get X is equal to 90. So it turns out that this angle is actually a 90 degree angle. 
All right, so we found the missing angle in the polygon. So the next question, each angle of a regular polygon measures 172.8. So we got a polygon with the same, uh, with congruent sides uh, and angles. How many sides does a polygon have? So since we're looking at the each of the angles, that means we have to take the formula for the total of the angles, and we have to divide that by how many sides we have. Now we don't know how many sides we have, so we're gonna call it N. Okay, the number of sides. And, and if we divide that by n, we should get 172.8 for each of the angles uh, on the interior. All right, so let's solve this equation. You can, of course, guess and check, but it's easier to just solve it and get it over with. So I'm going to get rid of the n on the bottom. Remember, it's dividing, so we want to multiply to cancel it out. All right, so now I'm going to distribute this 180. Don't forget the distributive property. So we have 180n minus 360 equals 172.8n. We'll subtract 180 on both sides. So we get negative 360 equals, and we gotta subtract those numbers. Now this is gonna be negative 7.2n. Now we want to divide by negative 7.2 on both sides. And that will give us the number of sides. You should get a whole number from this. Um, I don't. If you get a a non-whole number, you probably and that it's really close to a um, whole number, you might want to round it. But usually, you'll get a nice um, round, even number rather. In this case, we get 50 sides. Okay, so we got if n is equal to 50, we got a 50-sided polygon. All right, so now instead of, uh, we're gonna shift our attention from interior angles to exterior angles of a polygon. So uh, exterior angles, the way they uh, look like is you extend each of the sides of a polygon like this, and you take the shortest possible angle to the other side, to the other uh, side in the polygon, such as this side. So instead of doing the full 180 here, you're taking this smaller angle. So you repeat this for all of the angles, and uh, you'll be able to get all of the exterior angles. Now, if you were to add up all these exterior angles, you're gonna get a, a very specific number. So, uh, and, it, and, it's, um, and it does not depend on the number of sides in the particular polygon. So in order to um, figure out the exterior angles when we add them together, we can take the interior uh, to get the exterior, which is the blue, we could take the interior and the exterior put together and then subtract out the interior angles. So in this um, diagram, if we want the blue, uh, we can take the orange, which is the interior and exterior, and then subtract out the interior portion, and that will give us our exterior portion. Okay, we do this because we know the formula for the interior angles. And we also know that uh, this right here, this one, uh, these two, um, the inside and the outside form a linear pair, which is 180. And so we can use that to our advantage. So if we did this for all of these linear pairs, this inside, rather inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, that forms, those are all linear pairs. And we'll have, uh, for an octagon, we'll have eight of them. For a pentagon, we'll have five of them. So you could take 180 and multiply by the number of sides um, right here, and that will give you your interior and exterior. And then we also know for the interior angle measures, the total is given by that formula. Uh, this is that formula that we used earlier. So now what we can do is just do the math here. So we can uh, distribute the 180, and so that gives us 180n, and notice that these cancel out and you're left with 360. So the sum of the exterior angle measures is 360. And notice that this does not depend on the number of sides because we used the formula for n. So n could be anything. So this is the polygon exterior angle sum theorem. If you were to add up the uh, measures of the exterior angles of a polygon, in this case, in this theorem, it says convex, one at each vertex is 360. So notice for the octagon, it was 360. In this example, we have a pentagon. So now let's look at the, um, so if you want to find the exterior angle for a regular 
or polygon rather, then you take 360 divided by the number of sides. So for this, in this example, this is a regular pentagon. So we know that in order to find the angles for, the re for this regular pentagon, we have to take 360 divided by, in this case we got five sides, and if we did 360 divided by five, uh, let's see here, we have, we'll do the calculation here real quick, we have 72, so that means each of these angles in this particular diagram is 72 degrees, and so on. And you can do this for any uh, regular, in this case, uh, convex, according to the theorem, any regular convex polygon. So the formula for the measure of an exterior angle is 360 over n. So let's look at um, another example. So we have here a uh, polygon. We have a five-sided polygon, so a pentagon here. It's irregular and it's convex. So it says angle one is congruent to angle three. So these two angles are congruent. Angle one is equal to three x. So this is three x, which means that this has to be three x. Angle two is two x. What is the measure of each exterior angle? Now we know that this is 90 degrees, which means that this has to be 90 degrees as well. So we know these exterior angles. So we know that uh, the measure of angle 5 is equal to the measure of angle 4, which is equal to 90 degrees. So we know that much. And we know that the exterior angles for a, a convex polygon add up to 360. So we can add up all these angles here. So we have here 3x plus 2x plus 3x plus the 290s has to equal 360. So um, we have 3x plus 2x plus 3x. Well, that adds up to a total of 8x's. And this adds up to 180. Then we can say 8x, subtract 180 on both sides, is equal to 180. Then we can divide by 8, which in turn uh, gives us the value of x here. So we have 22.5. So x is 22.5, we can plug in to get angle 1, and we know that angle 1, we'll plug, we'll plug it in here, angle 1 is equal to angle 3. So we got this answer, and we're going to do this one now. We have 3 times 22.5, which is 67.5. So we got these three ang these two angles rather, and then finish it off with angle two. So a measure of angle two is two times twenty two point five, which is forty five degrees. And that's the those are each of the exterior angles. Okay, and um, the previous uh, example was example two, and this one is example three, although the numbering is uh, switched here. What are the measures of the interior angles of the pentagon? shown. So again, we're doing another interior angle um, problem. So, uh, and we have, since we have a pentagon, we have a five-sided uh, shape here. So we know that if we were to do the sum of the interior angles, it's going to be 5 minus 2 times 180, which is 540. So now each of these angles adds up to 540. We know that this is 90. Okay, so because that's 90, let's go ahead and add up all these angles. Now this is going to be an algebraic equation, like a more complex one, but nothing too crazy. You just have a bunch of x's to combine. So we have 1, 2, we have this third angle, 6x plus 12, we have the 90 degree angle, and then finally we have the 6x minus 3 angle, which has to add up to 540 in total. We combine our x's together. So 3 plus 7 is 10, 10 plus 6 is 16, 16 plus 6 is 22. Combine the, the constants together, 4 minus 3 is 1, plus 12 is 13. Uh, and then 13 plus 90 is 103, minus 3, so 100. So we have plus 100. Then we can subtract 100 on both sides.
finish it up by dividing by 22. Now 22 goes into 44 twice, so this is going to be 20. So uh, we know that x is 20. We can find the interior angles here. We just got to plug in. So we got 3 times 20 plus 4, and that turns out to be 64 degrees. We have here 7 times 20 minus 3. That's 140 minus 3. That's 137. We have here 6 times 20 plus 12. That's 120 plus 12. So that's 132. We got a 90. And then we got 6 times 20. Take away 3. Uh, so 120 take away 3. So that's 117. All right, guys. I hope you found this um, video useful. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.